Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Dead Space 3. We still have to reconfigure the alien machine, so I hope you like light puzzles. Because first, the beams. Redirect the beams. There are four columns in total. I think the backmost one is going to be completely irrelevant. I give that one a spin. I give the one in the middle, I think, two spins. But first, we have tentacles. Ooh. This one crawled on all fours to cover a little bit more ground. I got bullied off of my platform. Until this tentacle is taken care of. Once we get back on it, though, we can go back to using our super stasis and our super kinesis. They are going to flood in from multiple sides, but because these are a series of bridges, you can't really be entirely surrounded. There are only so many angles that they can approach you from, and because they have those diagonals, you can usually see and hear their approaches coming from far away, so this sequence is not actually all that dangerous. Hello? They do start mixing a couple of things, though, to make this somewhat more interesting than if they just throw a horde of slashers at you. And I think overall, somebody else had picked up on this in the comments, but... A little bit too much of the encounter design. I think I was talking about this at an earlier time. A little bit too much of the encounter design is just throwing swarms of, um, like, fodder and stalkers at you. I do think they do a fairly poor job in Dead Space 3 of mixing up the enemy variety. They, they ratchet things up pretty well towards the end of the game. Uh, but still, they're, it, it's lacking just a little bit. But they make up for the lack of variety in the enemy compositions in their encounter design by just throwing more at you a lot of the time. Uh, which is why Dead Space 3 is in some ways a little bit harder than the others. There's less variety and a little bit less creativity in how they compose those enemies and how they throw them at you and from where. But they just overwhelm you in a lot of spots, so it makes encounters more tense in some places. That being said, on normal, they do kind of glut you up with uh, with supplies as we've been running into inventory issues throughout the LP. I think once we get this one rotated once... Oh! I knew I heard that one. I, it kind of echoed all around, though. So I thought it was further off. Certainly didn't sound that close. Let's see, which of these did I turn wrong? That's one thing I find kind of fun about this puzzle. Fun, but just slightly frustrating, is keeping track of my orientation and what I've turned and how I what I still have to do. While dealing with the uh, the hecticness of combat. Looks like it opened another activation terminal. We're getting closer to fixing this machine, Carver. Oh, we have another alien artifact over here. What's this one about again? This is another one from Serrano. Ah, yeah, this is the one about their... He, he's really just speculating at this point, but... He speculates that their empire spanned uh, many star systems, and that they were trillions strong before the necromorphs got wind of how far-reaching their civilization was, and just descended upon them in mass. And this species seemingly went extinct in like the blink of an eye. So I guess humanity's already doing a better job than they did at avoiding extinction. Finishing something that should have been done a long time ago. Well, stop it. You're tampering with things you know nothing about. I 
right back at you, jackass. Hey, jackass is a great android. Don't, don't slander her name. Tannic is much more stupid. Also, you gotta love when your primary antagonist resorts to uh, just harassing you over voice comms. Like some kind of Xbox Live match. Stop it! Isaac, stop! Oh, that big alien skull! I think that's clever. Because you instantly want to walk up to it to inspect it. Well, you successfully turned the city into a giant pretzel. Now what? If Serrano's right, I should be able to return to the first activation point to enter the final setting. What happens then? Hey, I work on spaceships. Not you? alien machines, right. <laughs> they do give Carver a few endearing lines. Uh, but the thing that's clever about the cis placement is because you see the skull from the other side and you instantly want to run up to it and inspect it. So you might run into that ambush. Plus, you have the security or the feeling of security of knowing that you already went through this once from the other side. So you feel like you cleared everything out. But we've gone and we've really twisted the city around such that it's kind of confusing to try to keep a mental map of this place. And what we're doing right now is we have to backtrack a little bit. We have to go uh, back to where we did that tentacle puzzle, and we have to go reconfigure that. So I think, what was the opposite hieroglyphic, the one on the right side of the door? It was, uh, I think the middle two twisted in, so they're kind of wrapping around each other helical-like. Uh, and the outer two, I think, are supposed to be straight up or pointed outwards. I think going through here for the first time, or backtracking through here for the first time, is nerve-wracking. This whole area is its part of the, the wonderful, dreadful charm of it. This isn't the way, Isaac. There is a future for you, for all of us. Leave me alone, Danik. You can see them again, Isaac. Everyone you've lost along the way. It's a future with no regrets. I have no regrets, Danik. One way or another, this will all be over soon. Isaac! I don't think there's too much for us to do here. Just been sending the scavenger bots out willy-nilly, just to get a little bit of scrap metal. Whoops, I think I started using some of my somatic gel. Not that the not that we're gonna have um, a huge necessity for that stuff, but it's not like we need any more med packs th anyway. <laughs> uh, you could break the med packs down, but they just give you somatic gel back. So even if you wanted to, you can't, like, convert the currency that sucks. So if you're like, man, I have 50,000 healing items. Oh, I sure could use some ammo, though. I've somehow run dry on that. You can't break down all your healing items into scrap metal to, to craft ammo clips. Just into somatic gel, which is a common enough resource that you are never really running low on it. Tungsten, that tends to be the big get. Knew there was gonna be something sooner or later. I don't remember this area 100%, but oh shit. Well, we can, we can take advantage of that. These things don't have sharp limbs that we can easily pull off. Uh, but we can do some other stuff. Like, we can take advantage of the fact that they are spitting explosive, uh, crawler babies at us. The fact that we have multiple at a time, not good. Oh, 
kind of in a corner, but I think I can navigate this pretty well. It's okay, aside from getting splashed by one of the crawlers. I think one of them may have just clipped me. One of the crawlers. And once we deal with this one, should get joined by a third. I already hear it. Yeah, here we go. Oh, you're... I thought that one was dead. That one was just crawling around without a leg and an arm. Whew. Just narrowly averted that. Oh, there's more. You can hear it on the right. I think that might be a fifth. Yep, 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 yep. Holy shit. This is no fucking joke. I was saying, like, maybe you could take advantage of the uh, crawlers, but with so many of the aliens charging you, it's really difficult to take advantage of that and precisely dismember them so you can toss the uh, explosive sacks. It's actually not going completely according to plan. There we go. Even if you uh, shoot them near the aliens, the burst will still do a little bit of damage. It's not that much, but it's like a, 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 it's a free explosive. It's a free grenade. I actually think that Dead Space 3 expects you to use Kinesis more. Like, more so than even Dead Space 2, where Kinesis initially got... initially got improved. And this would be number six. If I can get all of the crawlers that just popped out of him and still damage him with this, yeah, that's dream is not gonna come true. I know he did just spawn some babies. I can hear him cooing. Jesus Christ, that cooing noise they make. It's ghastly. Off you go! We sent that baby to heaven. That baby's gonna be all right. So we have to do uh, these a few more times. I believe we were introduced to the Medusas last time. Uh, are we getting any of them here? Mmm, doesn't look like it. We do get some nice scenery of more of these enormous fossilized aliens. So you can appreciate their design elements a little bit more. Um, we're back here. Ooh, you can be handy. You can come in handy. Jeez, we have even more. We can let them fight, though. We can let them fight. Oh, if only he'd toss that grenade in a useful spot where I could kinesis it. Or at least hit the alien with it. Oh, shit. Was not prepared for this. That's a Twitcher. And they probably aren't just throwing one. There's bound to be more. Oh, fuck me. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, <laughs> God. Oh, shit. It's now even more difficult to kite these. Because whereas these are pretty slow. This is fine. 
Wow, I'm surprised I didn't pop the other one right next to it. Like, through the dismembered crawler. Point blank. Fuck. Well, it didn't do damage. Yeah, they behave similarly to unarmored brutes, but... They don't fuck around with how they throw them at you. Previously, you would fight a brute in isolation of anything else, and you would fight maybe a couple throughout an entire game. These sequences with the alien necromorphs, you're fighting like three, four, five at a time, and it's hectic as hell. Where do you want to go? If you want to go any further than, like, this wall, you ain't going to a spot you'll want to be. Oh, it's too bad, Valifax, you're going right here. You're gonna have to collect whatever meager minerals you can gather. Oh, what about you? I hope you don't want to go past that door. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, shit! I got startled by the shadow pop-in. And up this elevator should be that puzzle uh, that we did the first half of last time. And we're going to be completing it this time. Yeah, you can go right at the top of the elevator. So the other one to send out. Yeah, so these ones, the outer ones, we want to curve in. The middle ones, we want to wrap around each other like a double helix. And to do that, it's middle, top, top, middle. And we know that it was successful because the panel once again opens up. Sounds pretty ominous. For his absolutely... Oh, we're not even fucking with that. For as unbelievably devout as the, uh... Unitologists are... You can always at least appreciate a villain who believes... In his own convictions, like, sincerely. A villain who genuinely believes they're doing the right thing. Okay, couple questions, given that we just reconfigured the city multiple times, how can he already be there waiting for us? And also, that's bullshit that Ellie somehow survived that. Absolute bullshit. Shit, I have... EVA suits, and I catch fire if I'm in that gas for like five seconds. That should be his head. That should really be his head. And I know I'm hitting him because I see him real. So that, I guess that was his throat.
Man, took 12 to the throat. That's, in a way, more impressive than taking 12 to the head. There we go, some nice, juicy, splorchy headshots. <laughs> it's RE4-esque, the splorch noise. It's just too bad Isaac doesn't have a roundhouse kick and a suplex. He does off a headshot. Shit, that would improve okay, this so fight. much! Three receptacles, three statues, three markings. What's the final step? Yeah, so this is a really easy version of one of the language puzzles. Because it's all uh, demarcated ca uh, tablets. I, I may have said this in the very beginning of the game, but some of these Unitologist soldiers look a lot like uh, characters out of Army of Two. Oh, and it seems like what I thought was you had to shoot the grenade to make them pop like that. But I think if you just shoot them anywhere, the grenade instantly detonates and kills them. So we have one of the tablets on the left side. And we have another one, shockingly, on the right. Ah, uh, this is not even a puzzle. Just a way to uh, kind of corral you. Oh, hey. Especially the shotgun guys. They're the ones who look most like Army of Two characters. Can't pick that up. That's another stasis grenade. I can't kinesis that. Ow! Stop that! That sucked. Wait, maybe... Is that why they give you so much health? Because... Some of the gun guys represent an amount, a certain... Minimum amount of like guaranteed damage So they give you more health in Dead Space 3 to compensate for the fact that there are points where you are guaranteed to take damage Wonder if that's No, that doesn't explain the extreme amount of health items They may have just done it to make normal mode easier. I don't recall hard given that many supplies. Nope, go in your home. <laughs> All right, Carver. Another door just opened up. We gotta be close to the control center for the Codex. We've done everything else Serrano's set to do. I'm heading in. Yeah, we are just on the cusp of beating the game. We only have, uh, I think a small climb down and a uh, short chapter ahead of us. Well, I've gone and busted my knee open. I suppose the codex is in Mahad's hand by now, and this place is about to be buried, like everywhere else. <laughs> I remember telling my college professor I wanted to study Xenoarchaeology. He laughed right in my face. There's nothing to study, he said. It's all dead space. No alien life exists out in the universe. In a way, I guess he was right. There is no life beyond our system. Only a trail of extinction wrought by the moon. And now, it's right on our doorstep. Well, above us lies the means of turning off the machine, but also the means to complete it. Turning it off will finish our species. Completing it will save us. I had hoped to be here to witness the saving part. It would have been spectacular to witness the moon getting pulled into the planet and crushed to oblivion. A final act by the natives. A sacrifice to save us all. But now, I must rest. For 
Perhaps Tim will be along soon with the codex. It's been bugging me all game. I've been trying to to place where I've heard his voice before. This is probably not even accurate, but his voice sounds a lot like um Oh shit. Mercer? It was Mercer, right? In Dead Space 1, the villain, the unitologist villain, I mean, uh not Kendra, who kind of winds up being the primary non-necromorph antagonist. It's Mercer, right? He sounds a lot like Mercer. So the trick here is we have to not only watch uh, these things spinning ahead of us and stasis them as we climb. We have no real quick climb option here. Uh, so we, we just have to time this well. You also have to watch the lights on the floor because there are burners underneath. Just as a little additional hazard. And sometimes they go back to back like this. Which is really annoying. Also, I'm pretty sure I just heard Isaac do his little damage grunt, but I don't think he took damage because I was nowhere near anything that could have hurt me. Yeah. I think they randomly program him to stumble or struggle for a second while you're climbing. But the noise he makes when you do that, that grunt, is the same noise he makes when he takes damage. Which is very confusing. Oh, yeah! Here... ...the fuck we go. Well, not just yet. Gotta make sure we get those last-minute items. Give me the codex and you can have her back. No! Isaac, you know what's at stake. Okay, everybody calm down, okay? Danik, give me the codex or I will kill her! No! Isaac, what are you doing? You, you got a second chance. If he turns off the machine, we're all dead. Her, us, everyone. Don't let it all go dark, Isaac. There's more than one kind of right. No! I've done it. I've finally done it. The darkness is in the end. Let the evolution begin. Get out of here. Go back to Earth space. Tell them what we found. I'm staying. That's all I got left. You can't stop her, Carver. Not without me. I'm the marker killer, remember? Isaac. I turned my back on the world because I was afraid of what needed to be done. Ellie, I'm not afraid anymore. There's a shuttle over there. I want you to take it head for home. Don't come back for me. We both know I'm not going home. Go! Chapter 19 is the final chapter. It is endings. If we keep it up with a full acrostic, 
It is the Brother Moons are awake. So there are other moons confirmed, and if they were dormant before, they aren't any longer. So fuck Carver. Fuck Carver a million times over. That's so fucking stupid. That's not even, like, morally ambiguous. I disagree with him. That's... Oh, man, you have to do it. It's the right thing to do, even though it risks the extinction of all of humanity. And every other sentient species in the universe. Like, that's fucking dumb. That's- I don't even think that's ambiguous. Also, you might remember something similar happened uh, with the dynamic between Isaac and Ellie at the end of Dead Space 2. Not sure where that went. The crate that I was handling. I think the Leaper just swatted it out of my hand. We have a small gauntlet. We have a small gauntlet we have to run before we get to the moon. Which is pulling everything into it to complete itself. Uh, there is a similar dynamic between Isaac and Ellie at the end of Dead Space 2, where Isaac kind of forces her to leave for her own safety while he goes and confronts the big bad necromorph at the end of DS2. We have a similar thing going on here, except at the end of Dead Space 2, something really cool happens. Ellie, turns out, wasn't about to let herself be forced away while Isaac puts himself in danger. She comes back, saves everyone at the end just as it looks hopeless, gives them a lift out of there so that they can escape and run home happily ever after or whatever. It's a really cool little badass moment for Ellie at the end of 2. Uh, that doesn't get to happen here doesn't really get much agency in this except to say okay I'll do whatever you want I'm going home mm, I'll miss you bye Ellie's character kind of gets butchered all throughout Dead Space 3 it's a shame no oh, you're taking a few hits I think we might be able to make a sprint for this without turning around to see whatever's behind us. Maybe just to slow him down with stasis. Not even caught up. Now, I do think this is the final one of these in the game. Uh, this is also the one that is filled with the most hazards. You actually want to be in the top left for that one. And we, you can shoot this tripod or you can just whoop, skirt around it. It only has so much reach to flail around. That one's probably better to shoot this one. Yeah, getting the leg is good enough. What did I call it a tripod? A uh, Medusa. Really don't get why they're called Medusas. It also doesn't fit with the usual necromorph naming convention. So got a little bit more in the lead up to uh, this finale. But you can see the start of the boss fountain creeping in. Are you a Twitcher? Or oh yeah, they are. They are. I say this is the first one so quick I couldn't quite tell. God damn it. Oh. Is this getting closer? I'm mm, not sure. I've never gotten killed by this before, so I'm not totally sh certain. <laughs> About to find out, I think, because uh, I missed just a few shots. Okay, no, I think we're fine. Oh, hell. I think I need to take that out because there's a little... 
sinewy uh, mass on the bridge ahead. That's no bueno. So it turns out that totally uh, encroaches on you and it's totally deadly. I just found that out. Maybe so did you. <laughs> We're caught up now. Took the temple out much quicker this time. Oh, that's what happens. So yeah, you're you're on a timer, it seems. Didn't know that. I think all of my deaths. What the fuck was that? Isaac just tripped, he whoops the daisy. I think all of my deaths in this playthrough have been environmental related. Usually something to do with fire or flammable gas. Ah, you. Eukers are really annoying in this section because they slow you down. It's a nude. Get on the floor. Everybody walk the necromorph. <laughs> oh, I'm seeing goofy shit happen. Game's coming apart at the seams. Get on the floor. Everybody walk the necromorph. I wish he would have shot an acid ball instead of an acid spray. That works too. Flew up into the sky to rejoin his home planet, which is the moon. Also not a planet. Fuck. And now, in preparation for the final boss, I'm going to spend a minute or two just optimizing at the bench. See you in... A second. Alright, I think we're ready to go. Actually, couldn't do that much. But just swap a couple of uh, upgrade chips out. I lied before, this is the last one. I thought there was something missing when we approached the Medusas. Uh, and this is why, because there are actually a couple more environmental hazards in this section than before. Their tentacles are a little bit tricky to dodge. Oh, and this is an excellent set piece too. At Space 3 is pretty good about utilizing the set piece moments. It's maybe the biggest evidence of a shift towards action is not actually in the gameplay, it's more in the set piece moments. Ho oh, oh, ho oh. ho! They look like Dark Souls Basilisk guys, not the real ones, the giant, puffed up, fake ones. You can have it. We gotta kill that thing? There's not enough ammo in the world! We'll have to make some up! Look, there's markers floating all around me. I can use this TK charging plate and throw them as weapons. So because we have super telekinesis, we can use all of the markers as projectiles to impale the eyes. And yeah, it's a little on the nose, but it's poetic in a way. Using the markers to kill this enormous necromorph. Using the markers to end one of the greatest necromorph threats in the series so far. The consequence of this supercharged TK plate is none of the ads that it throws at you are even remotely threatening, aside from the fact that you're completely surrounded. But there's a stat. Whoops! There we go. There's a staggered manner in which they are thrown at you. So the chunks of rock containing the necromorphs don't uh, don't hatch all at the same time. So you can take one out, turn to where the next one is.
it's spectacular, but like as far as gameplay goes, it's also probably the least interesting, least threatening final Dead Space boss. It's not super interactive, is my only complaint. It's just ads and ads and ads mostly. It is a cool climax, though, I'll give it that. And you can also argue that you you can only defeat this thing due to the serendipity of having one of these alien super TK plates. Oh, one more med pack drop for the road. That's not true. We still have a DLC to go through. We still have a whole DLC's worth of med packs to pick up. Come on. Still a few more. Or can we get the yeah, no tentacles next? You have a long window of time. Uh, and it's not like the, any of the attacks in the previous games where you're getting pulled in. Uh, here, you could you kind of retain your footing. That would be really cool if the platform actually, like, dipped and swayed around and threw you off balance and stuff. I always like the sections from, like, Dead Space 1 where you're hanging upside down and you have to shoot with the controls inverted because you're upside down. Stuff like that's always really fun to me. You just have busted power-ups here. And again, one more marker for the road.
Isaac? Isaac? Are you there? Kava? Isaac? You're gone, aren't you? The mark signal has gone too. Isaac, you did it. You really did it. Earth space coordinates confirmed. Shock drive enabled. Standing by. There it is. There it is. Dead Space 3. Uh, I'm, I'm still fond of it my second time through. I still think this is good. Um, I don't think it makes the best first impression in the world, given how the game starts. Uh, the middle third on the surface of Tavalantis when you first get there takes a little bit to get going. But once it does, it's very, very solid. And then the back third of the game, I think, is entirely fantastic. I will cop to the fact that its pacing is not nearly as good as, as that of Dead Space 2's, which I think has the best flow of any of the Dead Space games, but I don't know, I've, I've acknowledged like some of Dead Space 3's biggest problems, um, mainly tied to how they implemented crafting and the litany of issues that stemmed from it and the publisher uh, mandated inclusion of microtransactions how that kind of seeps in and corrupts some of the more some of the um, some, what am I trying to say some of the other tangentially related game design elements but I don't think its flaws are nearly as damning um, as some people would have you believe especially with how good the last third is I can't emphasize that enough how perfect the Brethren Moon Twist is, the setting shift at the end and the alien ruins and all that, using Rosetta together, the laboratory section. It keeps getting progressively better as you go through the game. Like, it's a very clean trajectory up in quality from beginning to end. So, yeah, I think this is Dead Space... Um, I think this is Dead Space's Resident Evil 5. It's good, but forever in the shadow of the one that came before it, because that shadow looms so large. And because this one is flawed. It's flawed. It's not perfect. What it isn't is Resident Evil 6. It's not Dead Space's RE6. Uh, and I think that's how it tends to get treated. And that isn't exactly fair. Um, that isn't <laughs> the only Black Sheep of the Franchise style game that I'm going to be helping the cheer <laughs> uh, Because I still have the ignominious task ahead of me of convincing everyone that DMC Double May Cry is also good. <laughs> Uh, and there's way, way more vitriol for that game than there is for Dead Space 3, I think. So that should be a ride, but I do think that one is pretty fucking good. Just like Dead Space 3 is, we're not 100% done with the Dead Space franchise just yet either. 
Uh, we still have the Awakened DLC for this game. That'll be pretty short. Uh, probably two parts long, maybe three. They'll start up right away, right after this goes up, so we don't have to recite the whole, like, oh, no more Dead Space LPs ever again. Don't cry because it's over, smile because it happened. We don't have to repeat that yet. We still got a little bit more. So if you like what I do, please subscribe for more. I do daily videos like this. Uh, it also really helps when you like or thumbs up videos and leave comments. The comments are not only helpful to boost the video's search ranking, which helps more people discover my content, and possibly something they might like, I also just enjoy the comment sections of my videos. It's always very nice, it's very civil, I'm happy to talk to everyone there, answer questions, I usually read all of them. Um, also follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash thescribed, where I talk about how Ridiculous things like flat earth conspiracy theories are and other nonsense. Uh, plus, I usually announce my streams there, if even if I don't have a video up here announcing them. Uh, speaking of streams, those streams you can catch on twitch.tv slash scribed. And if you want to kick in a few bucks to support my style of content, you can do so with a recurring monthly donation on my Patreon at patreon.com slash scribe. All those links you can find in the description to this video, along with playlists for all the other LPs. Uh, even if you cannot kick anything into the Patreon, I still appreciate your watching to this point, nonetheless. Your, uh... <clears throat> and thank you all for watching. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one. I'm gonna let the credits roll and probably speed them up, because they are long. Oh, wait.